I kind of want to start off, Erlon, with the circadian rhythm that the gut microbiome is on and how this can relate to meal timing and metabolic responses. We have talked quite a bit about circadian rhythms on the podcast from you know, the master circadian clock in our suprachiasmatic nucleus and how light resets that clock and um, how there's peripheral circadian clocks in other organs, such as the liver, and how food intake is the major signal that resets that clock. So a few years back, your lab discovered that the bacteria that reside in our gut have their own circadian rhythms. So can you talk, maybe just explain a little bit about this to people? Absolutely. And it's great to, to be talking to you, Rhonda. Um, we, we have uh, done a lot of research um, in trying to understand better how the composition of diet impacts our gut microbes and through uh, inter interactions uh, with our mic microbes uh, uh, mediate uh, metabolic health and metabolic disease. But surprisingly, we stumbled upon a, a quite major discovery um, in which not only the composition of diet impacts our gut microbes, but actually the, the timing of diet has an independent and very peculiar um, effect uh, on the composition and on the function of our gut microbes. And through these time dependent interactions, our gut microbiome can independently uh, impact our metabolic health or our propensity to develop diseases such as obesity and uh, type two diabetes. And, and basically the discovery came across a, a very laborious uh, project in which we tried to characterize the composition and the function of our gut microbes at different time points along a 24 hour cycle. Um, so basically, my students sampled uh, mice or humans each uh, uh, um, uh, for our, uh, every four hours uh, of an entire 24-hour cycle. And then uh, we were surprised to find that many of the functions um, of our microbes change in very consistent manners along the course of a day. Now, now, this was super surprising to us because if you think about it, our gut microbes live completely in the dark. So how do they know that it's day or night and change their activity so reproducibly at the exact same hours along um, a 24 hour cycle? And this, this led to three years of intense research. And the answer was that our microbes sense the timing in which we eat or do not eat and change their activity accordingly. In other words, during the day when humans are awake and eating, the microbes behave in one way, but during the night when we're asleep, they behave in very different manners. And in mice, which um, um, are awake at night and sleep uh, uh, during the day, this activity is completely opposite. So I have a, a follow-up question for you. Um, we, you know, there's been a lot of research that have looked at how many genes in our body and, and particularly genes that relate to metabolism are controlled, you know, via circadian rhythm. And so, for example, you know, there've been quite a few studies now that have shown that people are, if you give them identical foods in, in the morning versus the evening time, and you look at postprandial glucose response, for example, you'll see that people, you know, the postprandial glucose response is much higher in the evening. People are more insulin sensitive in the morning um, as well. So do the bacteria in our gut is there a role that they play in energy production, in perhaps the postprandial post glucose response, for example? That, that, that was one of the most surprising and intriguing part of, of our discovery. Um, not only did we discover that um, the timing of our diet impacts the composition and the function of our gut microbes throughout the course of a day, we found that this amazing tangle between our diet and our microbes also signals to the host, to mice in some cases and to humans in other studies which we conducted. And basically the circadian microbial activity builds into the circadian clock, which hallmarks every cell and organ in our body. In other words, the microbial circadian rhythmicity is a, is a critical part that participates in this orderly diurnal behavior of our cells and uh, our organs at uh, different locations in our body. And once we disrupt the uh, circadian microbial uh, activity, for example, by changing the patterns of our diet or by subjecting mice to jet lag behavior, the microbes go crazy and stop behaving in this orderly uh, uh, manner throughout the course of a day. And this directly reflects on how the host uh, uh, behaves 
in its normal circadian uh, behavior. And we found that once we disrupt the microbes, the host is now susceptible to develop obesity and type 2 diabetes, which is exactly the set of diseases which hallmark humans, which uh, feature a chronic disturbance in their wake sleep uh, patterns, such as shift workers uh, um, that are at a substantial risk of developing obesity and type 2 diabetes. And for many years, we didn't know what was the missing link that caused this uh, risk behavior. And now we think that at least part of the answer lies within the microbes themselves. Do you, do you think that there's any s potential solutions for, for example, shift workers who are awake in the evening hours and eating food? Um, so we've learned a lot about time-restricted eating or time-restricted feeding and how that can potentially positively impact, you know, a, a shift worker's metabolism if they try to limit their food, for example, into a, a certain time window, maybe 10 hours, you know. Uh, rather than, you know, eating throughout the time that they're awake at night. Um, do you think that this also has implications for affecting the gut microbiome as well, doing this time-restricted eating if you're a shift worker or even in general? Uh, absolutely. And, and what we've discovered, um, at least in mice, and also to some extent uh, we and others have discovered this to uh, occur in humans, is that the dominant factor that determines the uh, diurnal activity of microbes throughout the course of a day is the timing of our feeding. And when we disrupt the timing of our feeding, for example, by subjecting mice to a shift work kind of lifestyle or jet lag, or even in genetically clock deficient mice, um, um, we disrupt the, the microbial circadian activity. However, if we take all of these disrupted conditions and now we um, time restrict the feeding of these mice to imitate the normal uh, um, eating behavior in non-disrupted mice, then we can completely restore the microbiome circadian activity and its effect on the metabolic and immune function of the host. Um, so, so at least um, in mice and to some extent in humans, indeed, time-restricted feeding could uh, restore and altered microbial behaviors across uh, behavior across the, the course of a 24-hour cycle. However, you know, if you think about it, this does not really solve the human problem because if, if a doctor or a physician uh, or a nurse uh, in a hospital has to go through a, a night shift and therefore features a, a disrupted microbiome and, and a risk of developing obesity and type 2 diabetes because of uh, the disrupted microbiome, you, you cannot ask a nurse or, or a physician um, to, you know, to eat uh, um, after they've uh, been awake for an entire night just uh, uh, so they um, restore their gut microbiome uh, composition and function. So, so what we're trying to do is to decode the molecular mechanisms by which our microbes communicate with our host cells at different time points throughout the course of a day. And, and when we understand what goes wrong, what gets disrupted when um, the circadian rhythm is, is uh, disturbed, maybe we could develop new interventions that would enable the microbes to now correctly signal to the host and to avoid these risk behaviors and these uh, susceptibility to disease. If some of these microbes, they're, they're, so they're obviously sensitive to the, the feeding fasting period, so food intake versus not eating. What about the composition of the food? Like, does that play a role? Does that matter in addition to you know some of these these micro um, species that are that are you know active uh, on their diurnal circadian rhythm. I, I think that of all the different environmental factors that um, affect us humans um, uh, and and surround us, uh, um, our stress levels, the medications we take, where we live, and how we we conduct our lives, the composition of the diet is probably the most important and most dominant factor which impacts our gut microbes. Um, and, and this has been shown by us in the Personalized Nutrition Project, but it has been extensively shown by many others. And, and, and I think it is safe to say that of all the features that we and others are studying, there's nothing more important and dominant than the composition of our diet. 